Well, it's morning and we've left quite early today. It's just gone 20 to, six, 20 to 7 rather, so 6.40. Um, and that's partly because when I looked at the weather for today, there is, it says thunder showers from 12 o'clock. Did I say 12 o'clock or 1 o'clock? 12 o'clock, I think. Hey? 12 o'clock, yes. For the place we're going to, which is Fonte Badon. And from 1 o'clock, thunderstorms. And they go on until about 9 o'clock at night. <laughs> or at least the rain does. The thunderstorms are meant to go on for a long time. So we're hoping to get as close as we can to our destination. Um, <laughs> before it gets really stormy. Um, and there hasn't been... There wasn't breakfast or anything at the place we were staying at until later uh, and there isn't really anywhere open either the gentleman at the hotel because it was staffed 24 hours suggested we could get coffee if we'd gone further around but we just really want to get moving so and there were little towns on the way or villages don't know but places where i can see there will be facilities so we're just trying to get some way down the road because I think we'll feel better but if I look sleepy that's why <laughs> Well, we stopped. It was too nice a place to pass by. <laughs> and probably not a bad idea to get some fuel. I can't work out what sort of pole that stalk is on. I wonder if it's a bespoke stalk pole. Maybe, do they do such a thing? Maybe if you provide them with the perfect pole, they won't nest in your churches instead. <laughs> Wondering whether this is evidence that the donkey's been this way. So we're at Morias de Vecivaldo. Lots of people have stopped here. We're going to go straight on. I was just talking to a lady called Cherie from uh, Houston in Texas. Having a good chat. We're 4.8 kilometers out of Astorga and it is now 
<laughs> Ten to eight. <laughs> Buen Camino. They've got the date right, 4th of the 6th. We are what you are looking for. It says down here. 258.7 kilometers to Santiago. There's a strange smell on this section. And rather than being earthy or lovely and floral, what it reminds me of is going back to the 1980s. Imagine quite an old person's bungalow with lace curtains and doilies. Smells like that. Shouldn't smell like that. <laughs> but it does a bit, I don't know why. What would that be? <laughs> It's only in passing, maybe it'll... There's only been a short section that smelt like that. There's all this lovely broom around, you would expect it to smell of that. But no, it smells of doilies. Well, Andrew reliably informs me that uh, the smell is quite possibly the tree of heaven, also called the tree of hell, or the stinking tree, because it stinks. And originally it was called the Paradise Tree because they thought it was wonderful. And then they decided it wasn't wonderful because of the smell. So perhaps it's that, although I haven't seen any of those trees. Have you seen one of those trees? We've seen a few of them, yeah. We've seen a few. Ah, there might be one coming up here. Yeah. We don't. So this is the culprit, and that was, it should smell nice. It's garden time. We've also got topped lavender around though. And all of these little low shrubs at the side, that's what they are. Is that a car? That's a car. <laughs> so I just saw another bee eater. It was on these telegraph wires and it's flown off to the right. Not like what I expected to see on a telegraph wire. Sort of turquoise yellow red. So I'm having a bit of a funny backpack day. Occasionally these days happen. Um, even though I've got the shoes on the back, I've been having to move them around a bit. The last couple of days they've been fine. Today, I've had to attach them higher up. They've been moving around. Uh, it feels as though the weight on the backpack isn't sort of at the bottom and in the middle, it's at the top, which I imagine was the shoes. Don't know that it is. So I think when we next stop, I'm going to open the backpack up and rearrange things a bit. Um, other than that, it's amazing on the Camino how each day can feel different. And of course, people break up their stages in different ways. But for us, each stage has had a different characteristic to it. 
And today, this is like a different landscape again. We've got all of this brim, the lavender, the different smells. Um, this long straight path next to a road actually there. But you're not so aware of the road and it's not a much used road. I think we've seen one or maybe two cars, that's it. Um, even the little villages we've been through feel a bit different. They're sort of... I think as it's higher ground, but it's more open around. And the vegetation is greener again. And there is a freshness to the air, plus we can see these storm clouds up ahead. The sky is quite dark and it's gone a little more overcast now. Different smells again there. I think that was more time. Every so often the air also has a hint of a sort of pomegranate to it, which is actually quite pleasant. <laughs> so those clouds over there are what in particular is probably going to be a concern later. <laughs> So we're coming into Santa Catalina de Somoza and it's now just gone 8.40 which is two hours after we left and this is 9.4 kilometres which is 5.8 miles. So given that we also had a stop, uh, we've walked quite quickly here which is good in that we are hoping to not get caught in the storm but also good that we're able to do it given the shape we were in a couple of days ago. <laughs> stalk in that church bell tower. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> We're going to the second one. Have a little stop there. Well, we've stopped for coffee and it took me about 20 minutes to get served. Rather a strange place. Quite nice. A bit peculiar though. They do a line in knives, which they advertise at the bar. Well, it is now starting to rain, so we're leaving there at 20 past nine, uh, rather not 20 past, 10 past nine. So I think we're nearing the time when I have to crack out the poncho, which means I might not be able to show quite as much because I won't want to get the camera wet. Um, it was a strange place we stopped at. I went in, went to the bathrooms and there was basically none of the stuff that was needed in there. So I had to go and ask the lady to get things and she rooted around for a while. And then I came out and I ordered and that took a while and there was sort of it seemed a really nice place in that there was a local man that I was chatting away to the lady she seemed a very busy sort of lady very sort of on top of things um, but there were a lot of flies around and yeah they had sort of pocket flick knives uh, hand carved with different prices displayed on the counter and she sort of took a while making the coffees fired up the orange juice machine. Anyway, Andrew was sending me messages because he was quite worried about what happened to me. <laughs> and it, it did, it took a quarter of an hour to just... <sighs> and now it's raining. So, but it's all okay, it's only 10 past nine. We've got about 10 miles left, or what was it, about 16K I think I said. Might be a bit less than that. And I think it's going to be an interesting day. It's quite breezy up here now too as well. Not too much, but I can feel it picking up a bit. Before it gets too rainy and windy, I thought I'd just show you just how ridiculous the pair of us look. <laughs> um, it took a long time to get this set up. I, I'm sort of floating about like a jellyfish. 
couldn't figure out where the hood was, couldn't find the armholes, thought it was going to suffocate. <laughs> and everybody who's brought raincoats is looking at us as though we're idiots and backpack covers. But I have confidence it won't continue like this, even though it is Galicia and they say Sora Yora you are usually rains. So I'm filming this on my phone. Oh dear god. It's so cold. I feel like I've got tiny knives coming at me. It's cold, it's wet, we're just I'm plowing through everything. When come in? I'm plowing through the puddles. I'm glad I got the Vibram soles. We're so exposed here, I've no idea what time it is, where we're up to, because everything's been pushed away to keep it dry. We're under basically plastic bags, whereas everybody else has got proper ponchos or raincoats. But actually they work. So that's this part. And here's me. <laughs> we took shelter just in the doorway of the church back there. And there was a gentleman who'd set up a stand selling gemstone pendants mostly. And I had a good look at them while we were sheltering. Um, not the cheapest, but there was one which is a carved cornelian um, and it's got a rabbit carved into it. He said it's from India, it's not a local thing or anything. So you can probably pick them up in lots of places, but it's handmade and I was rather drawn to it. Um, so I bought that from him and he had a sign everywhere saying, well, lots of signs saying no photos <laughs> and that it's his job and everything, which I was respectful of. He was a really nice chap. Now his name is Veronimo. Um, so we had a bit of a chat with him and he let us sort of sit on the um, bench at the side of the, like there's a stone carved bench in the church doorway. So the weather seems to have improved at least temporarily. Uh, enough for me to get this camera out at least. It was fierce before. The, the thing was that the rain was sort of coming into our faces and the wind was blowing against our backpacks um, and I just kept my head down and powered through it all uh, yeah so I'm about to check where we're up to but we've just come through I can't remember the name of the place El it's not Gastro it's a word like that how terrible that I can't remember I should look it up in a moment there we go it's El Ganso so we're here and we'll go through Rabanal del Camino to Fonte Badon and Cruz de Ferro is tomorrow. So from El Gansa, which was just behind us, it was 12.5 kilometers to Fonte Badon, which is about 7.76 miles left to do. And I don't know what time it is because I took my watch off when it was it's raining. Quarter it's quarter past 10. Look at how lovely it is now. It's still a bit breezy. I don't quite trust that we won't get more rain because it is forecast for later in Ponte Badon. So for the time being, we've got our ponchos on still. There's Andrew. But partly because we're drying them off now. I thought we were going to be walking through that all day. So I can see Rabanal del Camino just ahead on that hillside. I think that's the last village before Fonte Badon. <laughs> Hola. Hola, buen camino.
So if you can hear a crinkling sound, that will be my poncho because I still have my plastic poncho on. It's actually cause, partly because it's quite breezy and I get earache easily. It's keeping my ears a little protected. Also because we haven't really had a stop to take one off and I'm quite keen to keep moving. Quite happy. Probably get more rain anyway. And why take it off? A lot of people have taken theirs off now. But I'm just a happy soul with my poncho on. Even though I look like a jellyfish. She's a bit concerned it's not the right way to be going on a bike, I think. Finding it quite hard. They're talking about whether to go on the road instead. Well, we're finally deponchoed. <laughs> we're going off up this hill. A lot of people have just passed us. It's quite interesting seeing everyone picking their way up here. another fence where people have been putting crosses well I don't know what they are perhaps Andrew will tell us so they're white asphodel there's another We've entered Rabanal del Camino, more or less at least. And we're thinking we'll stop here because we're both pretty hungry. We've only had one Napolitana. Yeah. <laughs> 
So we have a uh, tabla de embotidos, uh, various things, and bread, and crisps, and I just downed the cola cow because I was so in need of it, apparently. Uh, it's a nice place inside. Well, that was a really nice stop. A lot of people are stopping here um, because it is a hostel as well. Or they're going further into Rabanal del Camino. I don't know if you can see how dark the clouds are behind there, but we are hearing thunder. Um, there's a wind sock over that way by the building, and it's suggesting that the wind is going across the street from the left to the right. So, and we're heading further, well, <laughs> along the street. I'm backing up now. So, we'll see what happens with the weather. <laughs> it's not too bad straight ahead. <laughs> for now. <gasps> well, this place looks really nice. Posada El Tessin. Albergue, La Senda. They do vegetarian food at um, El Tessin. I hadn't expected um, Rabal, Rabanal del Camino to be as large as it is. I don't know why. I mean, it's not very large, but there's quite a bit here. And it's really quaint. And it's all more hilly. And for some reason I hadn't expected the more hilly, mountainous sort of villages to happen. Not to happen. <laughs> to encounter them. So early in this section after Astorga, I thought it would be flatter for longer. Koji Dr. Sylvan. Dr. Sylvan Street, I'm sure there's a story behind that. <laughs> and this is Koji Real, Royal Street. <laughs> Well, there's enough here that there are signposts on both sides of the street like that, directing you to various things. nice up here. It's gone a bit cloudy again, quite breezy. So I had hoped that we could outpace the rain because it's mostly cloudy behind us there. Up ahead, we've got some blue sky, but no, we've got rain again. So the ponchos have been cracked open. Andrew has put his on after taking off his backpack and now has realized that the backpack needs to be on for it to go over like so. 
<laughs> they're so attractive but they do work actually can you hear the thunder it's behind it's uh quite stormy behind us I chose the steps and I have to say they were not fun. <laughs> There's quite a bit of up and down I think before we get there. We're about halfway between Babanal del Camino and Fonte Badon. But you can probably hear them a bit out of breath. The remaining bit, I was just looking at the terrain, um, changing Google Maps to show terrain instead of satellite or just the ordinary road view. And it seems to show we go up, we go down, we go up, we go down. <laughs> when coming on. <laughs> I have to say though, although we've got ponchos on now, uh, and the rain's sort of coming and going a bit, it's not cold, windy, and strong rain the was it, the way it was for a while before. Um, yeah, the air is actually quite warm. We're getting hail. I don't know if you'll see. I have to put this camera away now, but I wanted to show you that first. We have rain, we have hail, we have sun, we have wind, we have everything today. We're walking over slate now as well. <laughs> We're walking over slate now as well. Um, that's the first time we've encountered that. More of the white asphodel, but it's in flower here. So we've come into Fonte Badon. I'm actually sheltering under a little sign for one of the other uh, restaurants and uh, albergues in town, not the one we're staying at, but it's raining quite a lot. So I'm keeping my camera well away, but you can see the rain pouring down the streets. I think I'd have been a bit disappointed if it didn't rain at all while we were here, because <laughs> you expect it heading into Galicia. Well, this is ours. It's the Hostelleria El Trasgdu de Fonte Badon. 
Well, we're in our room. And pictures of cities all around the walls. We look out right over the roof. Donkey in the field down there. And the people downstairs are really, really friendly and helpful. And we're very glad to be here. Every so often there's a lot of thunder. It's now quite a lot later, half past seven, and the storm kind of comes and goes. At the moment we're getting quite regular thunder and lightning. It's bright over there, but these dark clouds are coming towards us. And then there are great big cumulonimbus clouds that go So we've just been buying various things and paying for our room. I thought I'd show you the inside. The place where we're staying. This is a school, which means the goblin. And I've been talking to the gentleman here about lots of the mythical stories about Asturias. So we've got a little book about them. It's a really nice place. <laughs> 